Hey guys, welcome back to the Passive Money Plan. So people are always interested on how they can, I hear, like double their money or get 50% quick or something like that. And I'm sure you've heard that too, people inquiring about the stock market, thinking that it's as easy as selling drugs, but you can't do that in the stock market. So we're going to be talking about what is a growth stock and a ETF, but Kirby, you can start this off. I like the analogy you said. People ask all the time because, of course, they don't know what the stock market is or how the stock market actually operates. And they be like, man, I need to know how can I double my money in two weeks? How can I triple my money in a month or something like that? And what you just said is what I always tell them. I say, your best bet is to go sell drugs. Because I don't. there's no way to just say, hey, if you buy this stock, you will triple in two weeks. If somebody give you a timeline and say you will make X amount of money and let's say a short amount of time, then they're scamming you. They're what we call pumpers, people that just trying to pump up a stock so they can make the price go up so you can get out. Uh, so yeah, selling drugs is the best way if you want to double your money in a very, very short period of time. This, the stock market is not the way to go. Um, but the, the stocks that, you know, especially the new investors look at, um, you know, the meme stocks, uh, that's that's something people you know hear about you know the crypto because they didn't heard historically it goes up they don't even know the history that a good return in the market is about 10 11 percent a year compounded over a long period of time you know they hear about some crypto guy some dogecoin guy you know it runs up you know 25 30x and they think all stocks do that um that's that's a fallacy in the whole world. But um, just giving a quick rundown, uh, a growth stock. This is what a growth stock is. So just to know the difference between a growth stock and a value stock and a penny stock, but I'm just going to go to a growth stock. A growth stock is a company that is growing 20% or more year over year, growing in revenue, growing in profit, growing in stock price, 20% year over year. That is what's considered a growth stock. And just a couple of them out there. You still you got Amazon that's out there. You got NVIDIA out there. You got AMD. You got Tesla. The, those are the big names out there. Uh, you got, uh, you know, ChatGPT, AI. That's an, that's another one that's out there. Um, it's a, a lot more. And then versus value stocks, value stocks is something, you know, that grow between 8 and 10% a year. You know, a household name, consumer staples, stuff like uh Altria, uh, Johnson and Johnson, usually the things that's on the uh, Dow Jones. Uh, Apple, Apple has moved into more of the value space, even though it's grown. You know, it's still growing at an exponential rate, but you know, has the dividend and everything else. Apple is m moving towards more of the value, but it's growing at a higher clip than most value stocks. Uh, and then, you know, some of the banks that's out there in Bank of America, but those are the difference. But before I go on my, you know, rant that I usually go on. So, Alex, what's your feeling about when you go into the stock market, especially as a new investor or any investor at all? What method do you go for when you go into the stock market? Are you, you know, which one do you think best going? Looking for that growth stock that's going to give you 15x or should you find the alternative? I think growth stocks can be great if... Um... If you do the work, if you do the homework to actually find them, they, you know, they grow at a exceptional rate and they, they have way more risk than other stocks. So you have to know what you're actually looking into. Uh, as you mentioned, you know, value stocks, they're also growing at a great rate, but they are not maybe posing that huge risk like Apple compared to Tesla. Tesla's still a great company, still a big company, but there's way more risk in Tesla stock than there is in Apple stock. So as an investor, I think you need to be more skilled or trained um, on your emotions. You need to be, you need to know how to study a stock in order uh, to get into a growth stock. You need to know what you're actually looking for because most people in growth stocks are just looking for a quick flip. They're not looking to actually invest in these companies. So if you're going with the approach of being, being an investor, then you need to know what you're actually getting into yeah i agree i agree 100 percent on what you just said uh doing the homework is 
is key and monumental. Um, I am also of the belief that you should never take your investment advice from somebody else based off their commitment, their um, their sentiment towards the stock. If you don't know why you're in the stock, then you shouldn't be invested in it. You shouldn't be, oh, I'm invested in this stock because Alex is invested in it, because Kirby's invested in it. Um, if I'm invested in it or Alex invested in it, you know homework was done, but I still don't give you in right because you don't know our timeline, our horizon. You know, when we invest, we're investing for the long term. Your time horizon, long term for you might be three days, three weeks, you know, three months. We're looking years and years down the road, and we're just trying to get in at an attractive price. So doing the homework is key. I always say when people buy stocks, you should do 10 times as much homework before you buy, even buy the stock. I, what I see is a lot of people will buy a stock, and then they want to go look and see what the company is about because they heard it from somewhere else. You should do the homework, know the homework, and do everything before you even Think about getting into the stock. And then once you see that stuff checks out, then go for it. But another alternative for the, you know, I'm not going to call them lazy, but for people that don't want to do the work is why not just buy an index fund or an ETF, you know, ETF going around the concept, you know, like everybody right now is on that AI kick. So, you know, people jumping into uh, uh, C, uh, CAAI or C3 AI, excuse me. Um, they're jumping in that thinking, you know, chat GPT, let's, you know, let's pile into that. That's going to go up 500% in the next, you know, two months. But the thing is, it's a lot of companies that's in the AI, AI space. You got Meta, you got Google, Apple, you got companies that are not even AI that's, uh, you know, saying the word AI in their uh, conference calls and things like that. So you don't know which exact one. Microsoft is another one that's in there. But you don't know exactly which company is going to be the one that blows up. But you know AI, the concept of AI will uh, be higher implemented in the future. So why don't you just buy an ETF? And I'm just using AI as, you know, example, a theme. Um, but why not just buy an ETF that encompass all of these different companies that is moving into the AI space and then you know you will take part and get a game. Yeah, it might not be a big a big game like if you were just in one home run stop, but this one will give you singles and doubles if you play it for the long term. And that's my view on it. Yeah, and you know, with like you were saying, I mean, with with these stocks, like people, I mean, they just they just want a quick flip. You have to. You have to know what you want as an investor. And as you were saying, too, our timelines are different. Like I could be in a stock and be willing to wait until I'm 60 before I get out of stock. So the short term effects of that stock, if the stock goes down, if there's a recession or whatever, it's like I see those more as opportunities. And other people have come to me and said, oh, what's going on? The stock market's crashing. And you know, they just they think with their fear and you can't think like that as an investor. You know, you have to you have to look at as Warren Buffett says, when you purchase a stock, you're purchasing assets and you need to be in that stock for the long term. It's you're investing in percentages of companies. It's not just buying some e-commerce product like a toothbrush and thinking that you're just going to flip it. It's you're actually buying something of quality if you're doing the homework and taking the time to research those stocks. So consider it as something that will produce something for you in the long term. Don't just be in the stock, just trying to make a quick flip because as we also teach on this channel, the cash isn't what we're going for. We're not looking to get cash so that we can buy stupid stuff. We're investing in these stocks so we can get capital to purchase more assets. So you have to know what you want as an investor and know what you want in your own life. And, and that's very true. And it goes to the, the adage, like you said, you keep saying the word, do the work, do the work. And everybody's probably wondering, well, how much work should you do? You should do more work than when you investigating. If you want to go the single stock route, you should do more homework on that than you did looking for your first house. 
you know, when you look for your first, you know, your first house, you're looking at square footage, you're looking at the neighborhood, you're looking at the school zones, you're looking at the school systems, you're looking at the amenities around, you over here running through, checking every crack, uh, boat, window, you know, light fixture, all that, all the homework you did, as long as it took you to do homework to find the right neighborhood, to find the right house, go through the inspection, all that, that's how much time, at least how much time you should be uh, spending on looking for uh, an individual stock. If you don't have that time to put in that work to look for individual stocks, you should find the alternative. And the alternative is looking for uh, ETF, looking for a mutual fund that has maybe the stocks that you want in there and it will be buffered by other stocks that you probably don't know nothing about, but it gives you that buffer. But again, long-term stocks, it's, I mean, an individual stock, it gives you that home run mentality. You Albert Pujols out there, baby. You you hit it. If you get it right, it's going out the yard. But just think, in baseball, somebody's hitting three three uh hundred. Somebody hitting three hundred. They might hit a home run one every four times. But will you have enough money to hit that home run, or those other three times that you struck out, did you lose all your money and then you lose your whole bankroll? So when you go with ETF, you know, you got a Tony Phillips out there. You got you got old uh, Pistol Pete. You got, uh, you know, Charlie Hustle out there that's, you know, hitting four or five hundred percent. You know, it's almost like clockwork. Oh, we already know he's going to get on base by a walk, single, double, whatever. And that's what it is. As long as your theme plays out, then you will make money. Instead of thinking, oh, my theme has to play out. This company management company has to play out. Uh, the regulatory uh, way has to play out. The I got to make sure the management is doing the right thing. They're allocating capital in the right place. Those are the different things from stocks and ETFs. With ETFs, you have a conglomerate of stocks that will buffer you from the downside, even if one company goes bust. But when you go into that individual stock and then you think it's a home run and then you get bad management, bad capital allocation, interest rates keep rising and it crushes you, then you're going down with the ship. Because that is the only thing you're investing in. So that's my thoughts on that. Alex, you got anything else before we close out? No, that was it. With all that being said, guys, if you liked the video, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.